Welcome to the video part 6 of acupuncture treatment. This is a product of captureideas.com. In this video, we mainly deal with the differences with allopathic medicine and acupuncture treatment. Nearly all of us have grown up with some kind of medical treatments and go to the doctors when we have a sore throat or a sore foot. Allopathic medicine have always been interested in the structure of the body and how each individual organ structures should look when it is healthy. The tools allopathic medicine have developed meant to see these structures better. The microscope, MRI and the X-ray camera etc. In contrast, Chinese medicine which is the basis for acupuncture has always been interested in how natural forces functioning both externally and internally affecting the people. The Chinese medicine developed an understanding about how the circulation of blood and energy that is called QI affect the state of health and how seasons, emotions and weather may disturb these flows. The result is that allopathic medicine has developed a remarkable array of solution based on anatomy. Whereas the science behind acupuncture has developed many applications of a few basic principles based on physiology. This study of health also has reflected in the analysis of body chemistry. Allopathic medicine is again interested in the structure of many different fluids and can tell you what the normal range of sodium ion is or what shape red blood cells should or should not be. Chinese medicine and acupuncture focuses on QI energy. The circulation of QI polarities such as yin and yang, climatic conditions and the connection between physical substances and energy. Chinese medicine considers fluids and tissues important but mainly for their reactions to the more fundamental process. Allopathic medicine differs in a view of acceptable treatment. This can be seen by looking at how a viral infection is treated. Here the main problem is the virus. Once the virus is rendered harmless, the patient is viewed as cured. In some special cases such as transplant patients or HIV positive patients, there is a considerable effort taken to address the immune system as well. The philosophy behind acupuncture considers that the most likely reason that the virus was able to flourish in the patients is due to an imbalance in the patient's physical or emotional state, their personal habits and possibly the climate. The virus is addressed but the entire well-being of the patient is much more important. Another difference is in the way that Chinese medicine views emotional and mental problems. These have traditionally always been a part of any acupuncture diagnosis and treatment. An emotional imbalance may be a cause for physical ailment. However, this is not looked upon as a psychosomatic disorder and dismissed. This emotional imbalance can also be treated with acupuncture in order to restore the correct flow of energy. And hence, the physical ailment and emotional ailment will both be addressed and treated. The allopathic medicine has only started to treat mental illness as a component of physical health in the last 30 years and again by relying on such things as blood analysis. Chinese medicine, acupuncture, and allopathic medicine have all made great contributions to the healing art. They come from two distinctly different viewpoints and methods of practice. Hopefully this discussion has given you some insight into the differences between the two and a starting point of thought when next time a health problem needs to be addressed. Don't study harder, study smarter. Introducing the speed study system that anyone can use to get better grades in less time and with less effort. Here is one book I would like to introduce is for learning smarter and not hard. This has helped me to a great extent. With this book anyone can learn all that are mentioned 
in the next few slides. A few simple tricks and shortcuts to save you time and help you to pass test or exam. A simple 5 step system to help get everything done effortlessly. A little known secret to outsmart your classmates by becoming a super learner. How to get an extra hour in your day. You can have 25 hours a day instead of 24 like everyone else. Inject your subconscious with exponential mindset thinking and become particularly invincible by knowing what is going to be on your next exam. What is holding you back and how to use it to propel you towards your goals. How to achieve multiple goals simultaneously without breaking a sweat. 12 shortcuts to turn you into a smart student. How to stop wasting time and procrastination immediately. How to use visual clues to improve memory and recall remembering key details could be the difference between passing or failing your exams. The super achievers laugh out loud trick of making every minute count. The critical distinction to stay cool under pressure while most of the students panic and get stressed out. Achieve more by actually doing less. Use time more productively. Make each and every hour count. Improve your results immediately to build confidence and perseverance to follow through. Get on top of your various schools and work to do list. Enjoy time of relaxing, rejuvenating and recharging your batteries. Discover how to produce extraordinary results at school without having to study all night long. Get more information on going to the link given in the description area that is http captureideas.com slash best grades. This concludes our part 6 of this video series. In our next video we give you details on in yang and acupuncture. Thank you very much.